Welcome to Ann Arbor, the home, among other things, of the Argus Museum. We're staying on the corner of um, 3rd and West Williams, which is west of downtown in the old West Side District. So come out over here. We're going to walk through the parking lot. This lot, parking lot actually was home to a one story glass building that um, was designed by Gustavo Steen, an early engineer of Argus. And they did a lot of inspection of lenses and prisms and sighting devices. You can still see the, um, the, the, the um, rooftop tar line on this part of the building. Over the years, there was been additions to the building from 1940s to 1950s. But this is the original building right here, this section, built around 1866. It first housed a cabinet making um, company and then a furniture manufacturing company. This section was built in um, 1879, and then the middle section was added in 1881. At that time, this um, part of the building, which was originally wood clad, was veneered with brick. This is the main entrance to the Argus Museum, where the Argus One building is referred to. This is the lobby where we hold a lot of our events, where we have our dinners, receptions, um, presentations. And this building is home to um, several tenants, including Michigan Radio over here. And throughout this building, there's a lot of different tenants. The, the owners are um, Joe O'Neill and Bill Martin. Together, they form C3 Partners. We're just going to take a peek over here to this entrance. You can take a look at the Argus II building, built during World War II for wartime productions. And over there, that building is called the Brewery, which Argus also occupied for a couple decades. And um, I, they worked a lot of projector projects in that building. This building is ADA accessible. There's an elevator around the corner. But we're going to head upstairs. You might notice we have some plaques here about the Michigan Furniture Company. And one of the early ads for the C3 hang here. Follow me. <laughs> now, when I first began working for Argus, there was only these long display cases, and two were empty. Since then, we added several display cases, and they all jam packed. Um, this one was done, donated a couple years ago by ACG in honor of Doug Wilcox. He's one of the founding members of ACG, and he appreciated the, the uh, viewfinders, so this is dedicated to, to Doug. This display case, also purchased by ACG, um, is a rotating display case. The last year or so we've had the same display in this. It's um, uh, for the, the Sixth Floor Museum in Dallas. They exhibit, among other cameras, an Archotype 2. Um, they called their product to the Phil Wilcox camera. Willis? No, sorry. Phil Willis camera. And he took some of the most famous shots of that day, including this one right here. Can you get a close up of here? Um, and it was moments before Dave K was shot. Um, literally, where the motorcade is, is where the, X, the red X is. Here's their Tronic, Tronic 1, sorry, it's a Tronic 1 camera. And also, this movie cam was took some um, Jack Daniels and his family were standing on the other side of a triple underpass, and they were taking movies. Did not realize they were filming actually the limousine racing past them to the Parkland Hospital. Down here, we have a couple uh, another little um, human interest story. Milt Hinton, he was a jazz musician, and he used an Argus A to document the um, the backstories of jazz musicians. Well, this is one of our, our first of our long display cases. We have a lot of, a number of personal items that were normally um, owned by our business employees, including a lot of these badges here. They're donated either personally by the employees or by their family members. Argus was really well known for its clubs and family-like atmosphere. They had all kind of the, um, 
basketball um, teams, bowling teams, they had flying teams, people camped together. It was very much a family um, type of atmosphere. The other side of this case, we have some of our rare and early cameras, including right here. We pulled one out of our second one we have in, in the museum collection, a Model K. The Model K was manufactured in nine, this is, hmm, Ashley. <laughs> um, 1939? 39 and 1940, right, thanks. <laughs> it was um, in honor of the 100th anniversary of photography. That's a, one of the collector's items that people try to find. And on this side here, we have a lot of iconic cameras. A lot of the Argo Flexes, C4s and 44s, Neutronics. Up here we have some of the Minkas. Yeah, proves all those and accessories we have here. And we pulled one out here. Yeah, she actually pulled this out. This is an Australian-made camera. We talked about it in a couple of our articles recently in the Impressions. Uh, um, a gentleman from Australia was asking about information about the design of this camera, and, and it was manufactured in Australia. At least the parts were sent there, we think, and put together there, assembled there. But that's another one of those kind of models that people, our collectors, like to own. But come over here. Um, this is one of our, our floor models of um, IRC cam radios, an early model. Before Argus manufactured cameras, many of you know they manufactured radios. In the late 30s, they sold all their rights to uh, um, IRC? Yeah. Right? Yeah. RCA. Maybe? Yeah, RCA. Yeah, RCA. <laughs> the other side of this, you have another, it's just actually this um, artifact. Well, it was recently donated about a year ago by several ICG members. Bill Sterrett was among those who, who or, or really um, moved this forward. The, the reader was, um, lens was done, designed by Gustave Fassin, and the, this um, model was actually manufactured in partnership with University of Microfilms from U of M. It's a good part of its life in Purdue University Engineering Library. And about a year ago, it came to someone's one of our um, members' attention that it was um, being sold, and um, ACG members got together and purchased the item for the Argus Museum. All right, where do we go from here? We can go, I guess we can start here. Poplar the Giants. People always love the Giants. If you come visit us, we'll pull one of them out, and you can have your picture taken with your white gloves on. Of course, they were, they're non working models just for displays. For promotional, for promotional um, events, and some of these other other some of the rarer cameras we have. Well, let's move this here. We can see that better. Um, an ivory Agra seventy five. That's quite rare. More other seventy five model A's. Here is the um, um, Argus A came in several colors. So these are some of the different colors it came in. The model C four, the black, is pretty rare. Parts are copper, it's plated and, and iodized in black. Some people think it might have been uh, manufactured for the military, but um, that's inconclusive. So we have lots of our, our plastic models here, our 126s. And this actually was donated by Milt Campbell, who recently passed. And it was, again, for display for dealerships. He owned here on cameras in Dexter, nearby Dexter, Michigan. And this is for dealers, but the, the, actually the, the working parts can be seen through the, through the front um, plate. And we have our meters here. Above here we have um, this display case was again donated by ACG members. It hung in Columbia, South Carolina in one of the Argus facilities in the 60s and 70s. So inside the case, there are that era cameras that were manufactured in Argus during those years. And here we have some of the rare ones too. This is our very early production of the Argus A, 1936. 
I know I donated, donated that to the museum. And um, well, on top of these here, we have some of this, the underwater cameras that Mike Rispa is going to talk about a little later on. This one is for the, the C3 or the Matchmatic or that kind of model. I believe this one's for the C4 and 44, yeah. C44, yes. So, but Mike will talk a lot more about that. We thought we'd just bring them up to give everybody a sneak preview. We also have some experimental, can you see, let's move this a little bit. Can you see that, Ashley? Yeah. The experimental uh, models, they were never manufactured. Uh, we have another underwater camera device there, housing there. Some darkroom equipment here. Um, adapters. The, pro the projected, th this model um, camera, 50, sorry, projector 51-1 was like the microfilm reader was manufactured by unit with conjunction with university microfilms um, it was for people particularly soldiers who were recuperating in bed could read books that were projected on the ceiling so all these can we have, we have a lot of these canisters of books in our collection too we have more darkroom equipment dryers printers up here is kind of a fun um, little a gigamat can make montages with that. That's a fun device, I think. Unique to Argus. The clock. Oh, the clock, yeah. Bob Batchin, another member, um, created, donated the clock to the museum. And we hit this, this case houses a lot of our projectors, slide projectors, movie projectors. And we do have several of these um, enlargers in our collection because they're so huge, we did squeeze one in there. You can see through the projectors too. We have what Argus was almost as much of a, a projector company as it was a camera company, and they were really innovative in in um in their designs, often especially early on. They're the first ones to put a fan in the in the projector so that your slides won't melt. And, and up here, there's these are these posts are donated by Harry Gavino, Henry, um, the gentleman that wrote Argomania. Oh, this was a little crooked. It happens with the elevator coming and going. <laughs> well, let's see. We look down this hallway. There's more of the of the posters that Harry donated, and we have a couple of images also of of um, Everett Kuntz. He was a teenager in the late 30s, early 40s, living in a small town. Was it I think Iowa? And he would just document his life. With the A Argus AF. Is another one here. This is actually the poster from the show. The little one's called Bubblegum Girls. Another one here too. Sarity. Oh, this one's called After Church at Grandpa's. So just small time life document. And he didn't develop the film, he couldn't afford it, but when he was um, suffering from cancer, his children found rolls and rolls of film. In shoe boxes and developed it, and then they, they created a book. Ah, let's come to our well. But first, before we do this, well, um, we have an Argus file cabinet, and what we do here, we have things people can take with them. Past impressions are um, newsletters. This we have um, some other of uh, Argus related materials. We even have um, in here, I believe it's. Welcome bag bags. People want to take one of those or the new Ann Arbor. And this corner is de is dedicated to our our military. Our Argus was instrumental in, in in military devices. First, they made actually radios for planes, and but they did manufacture a lot of sighting devices, prisms, things like that. Um, this is one of our. We have a couple of these. Oh, it's heavy, but it's a huge hit for school age children when they come to visit. This was for, oh, this is the, the M72, uh, a tank telescope for the Sherman tank. And you can yeah, actually proves all the other stuff. We have a lot of our military items are on display. They were, they were um, loaned out last year to the NUK Air Museum because they're huge items. Um, I wish we had more space for them to, to, to show them off. Some of these posters here are from when um, Tony Vaccaro had a show. So Tony Vaccaro was a soldier during World War II. It wasn't, um, he was just a foot soldier. 
wasn't a journalist at the time, and took his C3 camera with him, and um, he would take pictures. But first, he was uh, he was Normandy, and then um, Berlin, and then Italy. He would just take pictures as he went. He developed the film inside his helmet in a tent, and then um, hang him up on clotheslines on moonless nights. He later, um, he actually more well known in Europe than here, but his work is in the collection of the Smithsonian and um, in the Gettys. Uh, and he later worked for Life Magazine and other um, popular magazines. I think he's still with us. I Googled him recently and I believe he's still with us in his late 90s. Uh, this is just um, as a poster. Argus won several E awards, E for Excellent, for Military Awards, for their, for their contributions to the war effort. And they're very proud of those. And you cover this corner, a couple mm -hmm. of these images here I think we have. Oh, here, this real quick, these, 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 these huge glass donuts are for the walleye missile. And I would tell Argus employees to take those home and use them as candy dishes and that kind of stuff. <laughs> oh, are we have a White House letter from the White House congratulating Argus on their 60th anniversary. And something else from, from um, Argus Industries also. This is a kind of a fun story. Uh, Dick DeMere, actually, a few years ago, he actually did a slide presentation with actual slides. Um, he worked for Argus and made um, cases in, I think it was Charlevoix, northern Michigan. And he quit Argus to become an um, iron worker to work on the Mackinac Bridge. And he took his Argus C3 with him and documented the construction of the bridge with slides. And so this is, he, he actually, we have a hundred in our collection, a digital collection, and we did print a few of them out. But all of them are online. They all, right, They're actually, all, all of them are now. online, yes. Yes, and actually. Did. Look them up on our Flickr. Yes. And they're, they are fun and, and they are interesting. That was such a huge, massive undertaking. Couple ads to over here. That's, I'm gonna walk through so the lights will turn on. Maybe. There it goes. Okay. <laughs> so this case kind of dedicated more to unusual human interest stuff for Argus. Um, we do below here have several of of the radios, the international radios. This cadet radio. This one it was actually a, a pocket radio. <laughs> In the corner there, they had a lot of big pockets. They made um, one, maybe the first um, radio alarm clock. Some other desktop radios. Uh, here we it, some stories to like. So here is start of Sammy Ross, who worked for Argus as, me, as a mechanic, and actually raced in two Indy races. Sounds like a very interesting character. Gustav has seen one of the early engineers who was instrumental in, in, in Argus design and um, innovative um, camera um, designs. Some of the interesting um, individualized, modified Argus cameras. Uh, we, we, we talk about here, we have more of this too, that Argus is really, or has been, um, showcased or, uh, had, or I said, had cameo appearances in a lot of films, including Harry Potter. Uh, these are a lot of the books that have come out with Argus. Yeah, this proves all those. Let's see, yes. Yeah, and um, this is kind of a fun story too. I had interviewed um, some gentlemen who worked for um, Harley Earl Associates, who not only worked with the car companies, but worked for Argus also, designing some of their cameras. And the story they say that they were supposed to have a design ready for Argus and had no time, so they went in the, in the workshop, cut off a two by four, put some knobs on it. This is not the original, this is what one of the gentlemen who was in, in that time was in the 80s, kind of mocked one up. And, and sort of to Argus thinking they had to go back to the drawing bar, board after the meeting, but it was okay with slight, slight modifications, and so now you had the brick. <laughs> Above, I don't know if you can see this or not, this is just some documentation of, of Argus cameras at the, at the gathering in North Carolina, and first Virginia, then North Carolina, that we got to attend, participate. 
This is some other movies and TV shows that Argus um, they make came appearances in. Von Martens has a long list of TV shows and movies that have Argus in them. He is the guy to go to if you have a question about that. These two cases were um, the contents were donated by Mike Ritzma and um, Pam Buckley. This first one was there was some online discussion about lens configuration, and Mike said, well, I'll solve this. I'll just saw the cameras in half. And so he did, and he kept a half for himself and gave the other half to the museum. And he's also, he marked how the mechanics work in some of these two. This is another one, um, the contents by Mike and, and Pam. And, you know, there was a lot of, or some, uh, advertisements about the, the Ivory A, but no one has ever come across one. But Mike, when he was cleaning one of his, his um, military green Ar tacky Ar Argus A's, he found a gold um, housing for the lenses. And in the descriptions of the Argus um, Ivory, if Ivory and Gold Model A, so he thought, well, maybe there is such a thing. So he 3D'd his version and hand painted around the lens an ivy A. This is where most always we have all our tacky exhibits. And we have a lot of space here. They do hang sometimes in the museum as well or on little table stands. But unfortunately, it's empty because the museum's closed. Luckily for us, Camera Mall, we partnered with in our current exhibit, How Far Have We Come, um, is exhibiting a lot of the work there, which we're so very grateful for. And they will be our next stop, will be visiting Camera Mall, also located in Ann Arbor. Did I miss something important, Ashley? Do you know? I don't think so. Okay. Did you <laughs> turn around and say hi? <laughs> hi. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Any questions? I'm sure this. this <laughs> After after this, you could ask questions. I'll be I'll, I'll be participating in in the Zoom meeting. So thank you all. Hope you enjoyed the tour. Come see us in person when we're again open. Or check out us all of our things online. Yes. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, our new past perfect online collection. Yeah. And we Which have you'll Twitter. talk about on Saturday. Yeah, we'll talk about more of that. Yeah. Later. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. We yeah. got a lot. Yes, we do. We're busy. Yes. Despite being closed. <laughs> yes. All right.